everybody. I wanted to show you some organization things I'm doing um, in my craft room right now. And what happened was I looked up a video or watched a video on organizing your stamps and organizing your um, ink pads. And, and then as always happens, you fall down the rabbit hole and you end up watching video after video and getting all these great ideas. Next thing you know, you're spending two days taking on a, a major project. And that is what happened to me. So as I, because I did a complete purge, a big purge of my craft room, not a complete purge, I kept a lot of stuff, but of my craft room and kept what I loved and, you know, and so I thought this is the time to organize and come up with a system. So Jennifer McGuire was a big influence. There were a few others, but I think this system may have originated with her. I'm not really sure. So what I did was I took, first off, I took all of my ink pads I had some close to my heart from when I used to um, be in consultants with them. I have some fun stampers journey now that I'm a coach with them. And I had some um, memento and I think that's it. Oh, and some distress inks. How could I just forget the distress inks? So what these are are little coin pouches and they've got little openings here at the top for each one and a little notch so you can pull things in and out. And um, so I made a bunch of these. I, I recruited my mother too, so <laughs> they would go faster. I made a bunch of little two by two squares with white paper. I didn't use the best paper in the world. I just used some that I have for when my grandchildren come over and want to make three dimensional objects with all my 12 by 12 paper. So that's what I have there. And then I took and just started stamping all the colors I had. And I wrote on the cards, you can see, so this says DI for Distress Ink, and then the, the name of the color here. And for the Distress Inks, Jennifer McGuire did this, and I think it's an awesome, awesome idea. I did a little, um, you know, oh, what do you call that? I did a little sponging on or um, blending of the color on here so I could see what it looks like that, because a lot of times that's how you use your Distress Inks. Okay, so I did kind of a rainbow order here. I did my reds first. And you'll notice there are a lot of blanks. So I have a front and back I can use in case the reds expand. I don't want to have to, you know, if I were to put the oranges and then the yellows and just kept going and filling up every spot, when I added another red to my collection, I would have had to move everything. So instead I left a whole page for each color family, or each color I should say. So here's my reds. And then I've got the oranges and the yellows. And oh, here's another thing I did. Okay, so my mother has some inks and she lives in our house. So um, she has some memento, MMO is memento, and she has the little dew drop. So I put DD for dew drop. This is my, my folder, so I guess it's how I would recognize things. And then I put mom underneath the ones that were hers so that I know if I wanna use this color, I gotta go in mom's room and find it because she doesn't mix her craft supplies with my craft supplies. She doesn't want to, so. And here is the here are the blues. Now some things were hard to tell, like this juniper. It looked really blue till I put it with the blues. Then it looked green. And so some of the colors you just kind of have to um, decide where you're going to put them. And here are the pinks and the purples and the browns and the grays. Now I did not stamp my blacks because to me blacks are blacks are blacks. The only reason I would use a different kind of black is depending on what I'm doing, like. The Memento Tuxedo Black I'm gonna use if I'm using Copics. Um, the regular blacks, if I'm just stamping, then I've got my um, Fun Stamper's Journey Black and I have a um, Close to My Heart Black. So either of those is fine for that. But I also have the Memento for that very reason so I can use them with Copics and they don't smear. And then what I did here, and I'm not sure if Jennifer McGuire does this or not, but um, I took my watercolor markers and my distress markers and kind of made a sheet. And I don't have very many of those, so they're just all on this sheet here. But it's JD is Jane Davenport marker, and then it's the color down below. So I know what the colors look like before I decide to use one. And then um, distress marker is the other. And I just have a few of those. Okay, then right now they're all in the same notebook, but as things grow and change, I may need to use another binder. I took and cataloged all of my stamps. So I stamped them or, or photocopied them. Some of them were just too many tiny pieces and I photocopied. 
But what I did, so here, this is SP and Co, SP and Company stamp set that I've had forever, and I really do like the um, alphabet that comes with it. And it has these little banners. And then you'll see up here, it says banner and alpha, and then die. So there's dies that match these banners. And I wanna make sure I know that there's a die set that goes with this. And then under here, this is a Ranger Dilutions stamp set, clearly the right words, okay? And I have categories. So first is A, B, C, one, two, three, and words. So some stamp sets are in two categories because like this Cuddly Salutations, to me it goes with kid stuff and it also goes with words because this, you know, these are sentiments. So these are the al other alphabets I have. And those are a few more words I have. And FSJ is Fun Stamper's Journey. And then I have the number for the Fun Stamper's Journey. Because I'm a coach, I want to make sure that I know how to access that online if I need to. Okay. And let's see. What's And there's all my sentiments. What's the next category is animals and insects. So there's that stamp set again with the animals. And the beautiful butterfly stamp sets I have. And that's all I have right now. I've gotten rid of so much stuff. And then this category is baby and children. And I'll just kind of flip through quickly. I'm not gonna go. And I didn't worry about if I was getting a really clear image. I just wanna be able to look through here and see what I have. These are background stamps. These are celebrations. So like birthday, anniversary, that kind of thing. Graduation, whatever. Um, and then I have food and drink because this is how I have my papers organized. These are all the categories I use for my papers. So I wanted to use the same thing for my stamps. And right now I don't have anything in food and drink, but it's there for when I need it. And these are frames and edges, just because and get well. And I have some, but I haven't cataloged them yet. And this is nature. So I have my florals, my trees, my branches, all of that goes in nature. And I have a sheet for transportation and vacation. And I do have a few stamps, but I'm not done with those yet. I ran out of, believe it, I'm sure you're gonna understand this when I tell you, I ran out of so many times my label maker tape. <laughs> I mean, I was making so many labels because I didn't wanna use my handwriting here. You know, it can be messy. So I just kept running out of these and I need to go buy some more before I finish. So winter, spring, summer, and fall are my next categories. For winter, I have Christmas stamps, anything that just looks wintry. Um, and also I'll put the Valentine stamps in there too. And for spring, I have all the Easter stamps. There's gonna be Mother's Day. I asked a friend where flying a kite would go. She thought spring and so did I, so that's where that went. I have a few summer stamps, pool kind of things that I'm gonna put in there for summer. And this is fall, has my, or it's gonna have my Halloween, my Thanksgiving, that kind of thing, okay? So that's how I did that. And then, so if you're asking yourself, then how do I find the stamps, right? Or the inks. So my inks are in different places. My Fun Stampers Journey inks are all together by the color family that they're sold in. So they've got different names like Rich Sorbet and Pastels and things like that. And I keep them in those color families. But when I'm looking for a red, I come here and if I see it's a Fun Stampers Journey Cranberry Bliss, I know to go to my Fun Stampers Journey inks to get that. Um, and my Distress inks are with my um, mixed media stuff and my my dewdrop, the Memento dewdrop inks and the big mementos are together. So I know where to look though because it tells me right here what kind of ink it is. And then for the stamps, what I have done is that, you know, everything's labeled and it says what it is, okay? So right now I have them in a shoe box, which could change as I get more. But this is just one type of stamp. So what I have, all of my Fun Stampers Journey stamps are together and they're in alphabetical order. So when I find the name here of one I want, and let me just find Fun Stampers Journey one. Let's see here. Let's see. What? Fun Stampers Journey Annual Celebrations. So that is right in the front, it's an A. And here is that stamp set. And I could just flip through and find the ones alphabetically that I want. And then all my other stamp sets are in the same kind of thing alphabetically. Close to my heart has bins that, that um, you can buy for their stamps and I have those. And I've kept a lot of Close to My Heart stamps because they match Cricut cartridges, so which is really nice to have. And when I had one that matched a Cricut cartridge, let me see if I can find one. Okay, so next to Close to My Heart CTMH, I put Cricut. That means there's a cut on a Cricut cartridge that matches this. So that's really cool. You can get, um, you can go in there and know, and on the package, it doesn't show here when I stamped it, 
but on the package it'll say what size to cut to match the stamp. So I definitely want to keep all of these to go with my Cricut cartridges, okay? And then I'll show you how I have my dies. I have my dies put in a different box and they are in the same category as I have in here. So if there are no ABC one, two, three dies, I don't have any. So birthday celebration, holiday seasons, they're all like that. And then I have them in these pouches. And a friend sent me these and they had three rings on the side and they're by Smead, number 68195. And they have little rings to go into a um, binder. But what I did was I cut that off and then I was slipped in the picture, if there was a picture that came with the stamp set, I mean the die, and then I put the die in here. So this one, Spellbinders Birthday Cake. Okay, then I come to this Fun Stamper's Journey one called To You, and I have stamp written down here, or type down here, because I know that I have a stamp set that matches that. So that's how that goes. And again, they're you know easy to find by category, and if, the packaging had a picture like this has a picture of the stamp set I put it in here with the die cuts so that's how I'm doing and I don't have a whole lot of dies right now um, I have a few steel rule which I haven't decided how I'm going to store those because they're big and thick but I'll figure something out so again this has the na manufacturer name and the name of, of the die so you can see right there and that's what I have so that's some organization things I've been working on now and I highly recommend you check out Jennifer McGuire's organization video. She's got some great ideas and a crafter that is to die for. I mean, I, you can, she does this for a living, so she definitely deserves that craft room, but boy, would I love to have that for my own. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching everybody and happy crafting.